Welcome back to Mrs. Bella's Messy Desk. It's pretty messy back there. Um, I've been doing some super fun stuff today. I've been making books. Lots and lots of books. Last week we drew characters and I thought what next but to make a book so that perhaps you can either draw your own graphic novel or you could create a book to collect all your fun stuff that you've been doing. Uh, we've got books that just take one single piece of paper. Super simple. We've got books that have neat covers made out of recycled chipboard. Um, we've got books that have saddle staples in the middle and saddle stitching. And then we've also got books that are bound with a stick. So we've got all kinds of good stuff to show you guys. Let's get started. This week's challenge is to create some books. Uh, one book, two books, 10 books. You may get the book bug and be creating books all week, but I'd like to see your books. I'd like to see you create something and perhaps maybe even draw me a story or collect things. I have this book started. Um, it's Bartholomew's book and it's his book of stuff. And I'm going to put his favorite things in here right now. All it's got is his best friends, which are Blair Brita, and Ludwig von Brushthoven. Um, it's also going to be a little catalog of his journals and things. So it doesn't have to be a book about you. It can be a book about whatever. It can be a comic book. It could be a graphic novel. It could be random things that you find and you want to stick in there. It's a sticker book. But anyway, make a book and show them to me either online on social media by tagging the Art and Makerspace at the Art and Makerspace. Or if you're a Shady Oak Artling, you can email or text pictures to me. You can also post on social media. Or if you wanted to make a movie about your bookmaking adventures, you can post it on my Flipgrid. If you've got questions, text or email me. So that's your challenge. And now we're going to go learn how to do it. Time to gather our supplies. What do we need to make basic books? Well, you need paper. Uh, it can be goose paper, good on one side. For the books with signatures, you're probably going to want plain white paper or notebook paper with lines. But for the simplest of books, all you need is goose paper, good on one side. You also will need a handy dandy recycled box and a pair of scissors. If you want to get super fancy and do signatures, which will be the second part of the video, you will need a stapler and or uh, a needle and thread that will be your binding you will also need a thumbtack a nail a straight pen something to poke little holes with for the last book you're going to need either a hole puncher or a thumbtack and a pencil that you can use to ream a hole through you will also be needing perhaps uh, a marker, Sharpie, something that you can use to press down and make folds with. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, and some closed pens are also very handy. So go gather, at least for the beginning, some goose paper, some scissors, and a recycled box. And you might also want to grab a magazine or uh, some scrapbook paper if you wanna make covers. So first things first, get your stuff. Uh, and then come back. For this first book, you just really need a pair of scissors and a piece of goose paper, good on one side. And all we're gonna do is fold it and cut it and you'll have a book. Take your piece of paper. The first fold you make is hamburger style. So you're gonna fold it in half the long sides of the paper together so that it makes a short fat rectangle uh, and then you're going to turn your paper you're gonna fold it in half again and then you're gonna turn your paper and you're gonna fold it in half again so you made a total of three folds and my camera is super shaky and I'm very sorry crease 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 make it nice and crease crispy and then unfold it you can see that there's eight sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This book will have a total of four pages, but it'll be eight sections. The next step is going to be to cut, and I wanted to show you where we're going to cut before we do it. So there is a line right here, and that is where we're going to cut. That's it. 
The easiest way to do that, since it's in the middle of the page, is to fold it again that first time, hamburger style, and then, let me flip it over, you're gonna cut on the crease from the middle of the paper just to where the other pages are creased. So I'm gonna take my scissors and cut just like that. Don't cut any farther, but just like that. Then unfold your paper. Paper is unfolded, now we're going to fold the book itself. I want you to pick your paper up and this time fold it hot dog so that it's long and skinny. You should already have creases up here so it should be pretty easy. And then I'm gonna stand my paper up and we're just going to basically squish the pages together. That cut that we made opens up this little hole and you squish the pages together, lie them flat, and now you have a set of pages you fold the little book in half, and now you have a very simple book. All done. Ta-da. Now that I've got my little book, what can I do with it? I can use it just like this, or I can make it into a book that looks like this. All this is, is the same little book, right? Same little book, the little flappies, with a cover added, and then the cover is covered. The cover is covered. The cover is covered. Yes. The cover was made from recycled, this was a cracker box, a recycled chipboard. Uh, it was saddle stapled, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then I made a pretty cover for it out of a magazine page. And so I can show you how to do that. If you want to go from just paper to a book that has a pretty cover and I could have put something right here like a sticker or I could have put the name of the book or anything else I could have glued on that cover. I just like that pattern. Um, so let's talk about how to do this. You're going to need your book. You're gonna need, if we're gonna do saddle staples, you're gonna need a stapler and then you'll need some recycled chipboard of some kind. And if you look inside, it can be the brown kind or if you don't want the brown kind, if you're lucky enough to find something with white on the inside, you can use that too. One thing you have to be really careful of, you can only staple as long as your stapler has reach. So I made this book out of a regular piece of eight and a half by 11 paper. My stapler has a long enough reach to go all the way to the middle of my pages. Uh, if your stapler is smaller, your book is going to be smaller. I have uh, a really, really long reach stapler that almost can go the entire length of a piece of paper called a long reach stapler. Uh, but most people don't have that. Most people just have regular stapler. So before you get too involved, make sure that your stapler can go all the way to the middle of your pages. Once you've made sure your stapler is long enough, now we're ready to go to the cover. So I'm going to take this box and I'm going to unglue it right here just by like slipping my finger up through there so that I have something to work with. Now, <laughs> I'm looking at this book. That's the perfect size right there. So one of these panels is going to work for the cover of my book. So I'm going to take this off and cut out the cover. like that. I'm going to take this, put it over here because I don't need it. And I'm going to use my book. Well, how about that? It fits. I'm going to use my book that I made to kind of see how big my cover needs to be. In this case, I've got it. It's You can see where the little creases are in the cardboard that my book is pretty much the same size as my, my poster board. So all I really need to do is see how big tall it is so my book cover is going to be cut here on this crease here's the top and then I'm gonna cut it on this crease right here that just so happened to work out if you've got a bigger box all you would do is take your book lay it out flat and then trace around it you're gonna want to leave a little bit on the edges because when you fold it shut you don't want your book cover to be smaller than your book. All right, so I'm gonna cut it out now. All done. 
take these, throw them out. Now you have your cover. You need to decide whether you want your brown or white side to be on the outside of the book or if you want your color cover to be on the outside of the book. If you're gonna make a cover, actually it doesn't matter either way. Um, when I fold my book, it's either going to have color on the outside or it's gonna have brown on the outside. I plan on making a cover for my book, so I'm gonna put the brown on the inside just in case I see it when my cover is done. So what I'll do is lay my paper on top of my book and make sure that it fits. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pre-fold this because that helps me line up the staples. So I'm gonna line up my edges and then smush straight down on this cardboard. If you have a Sharpie or a marker handy, it's probably a good idea to take a marker, a plastic marker, and run it back and forth along this fold. Book binders have something they call a bone folder, which I actually have. It looks like this. This is called a bone folder, and you can see it's marked up. And they would use this to crease their pages. If you don't have one of those, it's totally okay. Just grab a marker, oh, shaky camera, and do the same thing. That helps to make that crease really nice. I'm gonna take my pages and I'm gonna lay them in my book, whichever orientation you want them. If you want the little flippy flaps to be up, down, it doesn't really matter. I like that my little flippy floppy ends go down. If you had a preference, I'm going to cover this. There's nothing on the outside that I'm going to look at, so it really doesn't matter. But you're going to open your book so that you have two pages on either side next to your cover. Okay. And then you're going to take your stapler and you're going to staple the outside. And that's probably where a good place to have a crease because this top of your staple is going to be the smooth part. The bottom of your staple is the part that clips in and you don't want that on the outside of your book because that's gonna get caught on stuff. So you're gonna staple it to where you're stapling this is the top and this is the underneath. So that's another good reason to make sure your crease is really nice. Um, you can clip it with a clothespin if you want. Uh, if you don't want it moving anywhere while you're stapling, that's something that you can do. Uh, you can also hold it. I'll go ahead and put a clothespin on there. That keeps everything from shifting. And then I'm gonna go with my stapler, which I hope you can see this. I have a little mark right here where I know that my staple comes out. I've measured it, I've watched it. So my staple comes out right there. And if you don't get it the first time, it's all right. And I'm gonna line that little area up, looking both sides with my crease. Looks good. And I'm gonna staple. And it's a little off. And that's okay but it went all the way through and it's in the middle of my book and I'm gonna do the same on the other side so let me move my thing over and I'm gonna line it up and you notice that I'm not stapling at the very very end and I'm gonna head I'm gonna put two staples so I'm doing one here and one about right here you could just put one in the middle if you want there's really no rhyme or reason to it I'm looking to see if my staple is gonna go where I want it to and go and that's also pretty close. Now they're off a little bit and I could have fixed that by stapling them from both the same side, just moving my staple over, but it's no big deal. It doesn't really matter. So now I'm gonna take my book and fold it back in half. And if I have to do some adjusting on the fold, that's okay too, but it looks pretty good. And now my book is stapled right in the middle. Um, this kind of book, it's not going to staple all the way through. Um, <laughs> so you will probably have to go back and glue these together, but it keeps it in there and it does pretty good. So there's the cover of your book. You've got your book finished now and you can leave it like this if you'd like, if it, or if you've got the brown side out and you just wanna draw on it, or you can make a paper cover for it. To make a paper cover, 
you need a piece of interesting paper. I chose this piece from a ma magazine catalog and you can see it's already creased. I did this once already, but my video wasn't rolling so I had to do it again. So you're seeing it second time. Um, but I picked this piece from a catalog and I think this would make a really neat cover right here. So I'm going to use it. So I'm gonna flip it over and general rules of thumb for your book covers. So my piece of paper is really huge. I'm gonna leave it like that, it's fine. You want at least two fingers, maybe three, but for the size of your book, about two fingers width on either side. That's how much paper you need. This one, maybe not so much. It was a smaller book. I probably could have gotten away with one finger, but two fingers is still a pretty good guideline. Um, you can see that this was more than two fingers. It was three, and so that was fine too. Okay, so now that my piece of paper is good, I've got two fingers on each side, yay. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is do the top and bottom edge. So I'm gonna turn my paper and I'm going to fold the paper around the book. Like that, and it's already done, like I said. So you're gonna fold your paper around your book. Then, you're gonna take your book out, make your folds down, and take your piece of paper and fold it in half. And you take your book, stick it in the cover, and while the book is shut like this, you're going to fold the sides in. So mine's already creased, but what I did was I opened my book and I kind of tucked it in and opened my book and tucked it in and then kind of made sure that it was fitting nice and tight. Um, you don't want to fold the sides in while the book is open because it actually takes more paper to wrap around when the book is closed. When you when the book is open, you'll notice that there's a little gap and that the pages, that the cover slides. Um, that's why you do it with the cover shut because it actually takes more paper to wrap around. So don't fold them in while it's open like this so you're not gonna fit. All right, so now you've got your cover nice and tight and you like it the way it is, I would take my marker or my bone folder, either one, and run it along the edges and just make those folds nice and crisp. It's gonna help you later. Okay, now to put the book cover on, you slide your book out, take your cover, fold it backwards like this. And you're also going to take your book cover and turn it inside out and you're gonna slide your cover pieces in the little pocket that your folded paper made on the edges. That's why you need two fingers on either side because if you have less than that, it's gonna be really hard to keep your cover on. So do one side a little bit and then put the other side on too while your book is still folded backwards. You can't slide it all the way on or you're not gonna be able to put it on very well. Um, so let's still out here. And it's a little fiddly sometimes. You wanna go in the pockets. And once you've got it on both sides, then you can scooch it down and shut your book. And there is a really wiggly camera. Um, is your book cover. What if you want to make a book that has a different kind of page setup? This was one piece of paper cut in the middle and folded and so you have really a total of four pages. What if you want your book to have more pages? You need to create signatures. This is an old hardback book and you can see at the top get my pencil that it looks like there's little groups of pages in here Let me get it a little closer these are signatures and it's pieces of paper folded in half and then bound at the middle this book actually has some easily to see signatures because it's so old I'll open up and the signatures on this book are sewn so someone came in here with book binding thread and this is an old book, this is glue. You can see the old glue. But the pages are actually sewn together in this book. The other way that you can do signatures in a book is like a magazine or like the books that we're making and use a saddle staple. And this is one of my art magazines. 
And basically it's one big signature with the saddle staples right in the middle. Now, this is a good example of my stapler will not reach all the way to the end. The people that make this publication have a really long stapler and they're able to get their staples all the way to the middle. So this magazine is just one signature. To make signatures, you need white paper. And you need white paper on both sides because signatures allow you to see both sides of the page. Depending on how big you want your book and how long your stapler is, you probably will not be able to make books that are half page. You will probably have to make books that are quarter page at the most. And I'm looking at my stapler and it will not even reach quarter page. So you're gonna have to improvise. My book that I made here was an eighth of a page and my stapler did great on that one. So how do we create a whole bunch of pages? You could cut your paper into pages, but we're gonna try something else. I'm gonna tear the paper and the reason I do that is because it makes a nice sharp line and plus there's a good, you need to learn how to do this. So go with me here. So. Let's tear some paper, and if you want to practice on some goose paper, go grab some goose paper and we'll practice. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our regular piece of eight and a half by 11, and I'm gonna fold it in half hamburger style. And the way I fold is I use my thumbs on the corners and my fingers out here to line up. They almost act like little stops. And to line up the edges together. I put my paper down, I hold my paper, slide my thumbs to the middle, and then out to the outsides. That's how I do it. You don't have to do it that way, but that's how I do it. So now that I've got my piece of paper folded in half, I'm gonna take my finger nail, because mine's are pretty sharp, and I'm going to crease with my fingernail really, really good, so that this crease, and you can hear it, you can also take something metal, like the edge of your scissors, and do it, but you have to do it really gently, or you're gonna tear the paper. Um, but what you want is this really hard crease right here. And when I open it up, you can see, man, that crease is, that's for real. You can see that. And then I'm gonna tear it. And to tear it, I'm gonna start a little edge, and then I'm gonna put my hands on both sides and I'm going to lift the middle of the paper by pinching my hands together, and then I'm gonna start pulling out. And this one obviously is not creased well enough because it tore, so let's try the other side. And that did pretty good. I know it leaves you with a little kind of a fluffy line right there. That's gonna give you a better edge though than cutting it. So you can tear, you can practice tearing this page a little bit more. I'm gonna try another one because that one didn't do exactly what I wanted to. And I'm using my fingernail to really get that crease. This is a good skill to learn for origami as well. So any way you make your pages, whether you tear them or cut them, you're gonna want a stack of them. Um, and they're all gonna be the same size. So I don't mind the edges being torn. I'm just gonna go ahead and use this. Um, I would suggest sets of eight pieces of paper. Right now I've got four. One, two, three, four. Uh, your staples and your books work best if there's no more than eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one more piece of paper so I can have eight pages to my book. Okay, so I've got two pages worth and they're blank on both sides and they're all the same size, give or take a little bit. Some of them have the little fluffy edges from where I tore them, some don't, um, that's totally up to you. Um, but you're going to want to take them and fold them individually 
in half. Don't fold the whole big mess together. Um, you can, but it the edges tend to get a little wonky when you do that. So I like to do it like this. I've got all mine folded and then I'm going to stick them inside each other. ready to go. If you just want your book to be like this, go ahead and do the staple thing where you staple it from the top down, right? You want your flat part to be out here. You would go ahead and go staple it or you need to get another cover, which I'll do right now. I've got my cover cut out and I'm going to fold it in half so that I'll have a line right here to use as my guide for my stapler just like I did before. And this one's a little tougher. Instead of sliding my fingers down, I'm just going to start pressing it. And then I'm gonna take my marker or my bone folder and run it along the outside. I'm gonna do mine the same way. I'm gonna cover my book again. So I'm gonna put this crazy stuff on the outside though. Having a book that says Bobo's Oat Bites is kinda of nice. I don't get any money for that, just saying. They're just tasty. Okay lining my book up with the crease going ahead and using my clothes pins to keep my pages from shifting while I staple flipping my book over so that the staple the flat part will be on the outside I'm gonna do it from the same side of the book this time lining my stapler up so that it looks like it's good staple all right, and doing the same on the other side. It's a little harder with my left hand. Lining the stapler up so I think it looks good. Go. And well, that's pretty close. And then I'll take my clothespins off. Wiggly camera. And I'm gonna fold it tight, tight, tight right now. I'm gonna use my bone folder or you can use your marker press down on that edge and that should give you a book that is saddle stapled with one signature you can see mine's a little off and that's totally okay because again we're not professionals and every page is stapled in there if you don't have a stapler there's another way you can do this which I'll show you guys in a minute it's actually using thread to sew and that way you can do an even lower tech than a stapler. All right, we'll get ready for that one. So what if you don't have a stapler? If you don't have a stapler, you can do a sewn binding. And there are professional ways to do this, and then there is the I'm making a book in my art room way to do this. It's basically the same, except not as precise. So. Take one of your pages that you're going to use for your signature, go ahead and fold it in half, and this will be kind of a template page. And you're going to want to poke three holes. I'm gonna fold it in half again in just the very middle so I know where the middle of my page is, right there. So you're gonna to wanna to get a thumbtack, a needle, a nail, something that you can use to poke holes, and a piece of cardboard. You're gonna be poking down in your table, and I don't want you to get your table um, poked. So the first thing I'm going to do after I fold my page in half is to find the middle. And so what I did for that was kind of turn it the other way and pinch it right here so I knew where the middle of my page was. And I'm going to take my thumbtack and I'm going to poke a hole right in the middle of my page. Then I'm also going to poke a hole here and here. And I want them to be the same distance away from my middle hole so I can either take an object and use it as a reference or the easier way to do that is to fold it in half. You don't have to crease it and then just pick a point and stab between both pages. You're doing it at once. 
And so now it will be the same distance from the middle. And you're going to want to do this with all of your pages. So you're going to line up probably two, three, as many as you can and do it comfortably. And you're gonna to wanna to poke holes in all your pages. All right, all done. The reason you wanted this distance and this distance to be the same is that if later, if you pick your paper up and you turn it the wrong way, the little holes will still line up. That's the point of that. I don't know if you can see it, but I can. My holes are lined up no matter whether the paper is that way or this way, which makes it very helpful. Now we're gonna sew the pages together. If you want a cover for your book, you're going to have to put the cover on now. So if you want a cover, grab you a cover, do the same thing with your template by poking the holes in the cover. I'm not gonna do a cover right now because I don't feel like it, um, but if you want a cover on your book, you need to make sure that you go do this before you sew. Get your cover ready, poke your holes. Okay, I'm not going to do a cover because I'm tired of cutting cardboard mostly, um, and I might do more than one signature. You're gonna get a needle and thread, and if you've got a nice thick craft thread, that works best, but any thread will work, and you want a piece of thread that's pretty long, a yard long, take your thread, take your fingers, stretch it way out, get you a long piece of thread. You're going to start in the middle. You're going to take your thread and this one and pull your needle through. Leave a big old long tail. All right, now we're going to line them up. You're going to Take your needle, so here's your tail, that's the inside of your book. You're going to pick a side, this side or this side, doesn't matter, and you're gonna come, came out this way, you're gonna go back down in one of these holes on the same side as where your needle is now. Don't come over and go this way because you'll go around the outside. So when you came out this way, you're gonna go back down. I'm gonna go ahead and use this one because I'm right-handed and I'm going to pull my thread through. I'm gonna hold this one so it doesn't come through. And there we go. Now I'm going to go, it's gonna be a little weird, but it's the way you do it. You're gonna take your needle and go back down through the middle hole, and they should be all lined up right now. You've got your tail kind of sticking out. I'm gonna go back down through my middle hole, and then I'm gonna come from the back and come this one right here. Hopefully I can go all the way through. Yeah. And then you could either tie it right here if you wanted to. I am going to bring my needle up under here like this. Just kind of tighten them up. Back under here like this. And then it feels nice and tight, it's nice and tight, and now I'm going to tie it in a little double knot. One, two, and then cut my little strings. If you would like, this could be the outside of your book. I, you know, sometimes I put the little knot on the outside, sometimes I put it on the inside. It doesn't matter. If you want it to look interesting, you can put the, the knot on the outside, and I kind of like mine on the inside so it doesn't get unraveled. Um, and so the way I sewed it, your knot's going to be on the inside. If you want your knot to be on the outside of your book, you would start from the cover side and go down. I don't have a cover, let's pretend this was the cover, but if I wanted to do it so that the knot was on the outside of the book, instead of starting from the middle and going down, up, down, up, I would flip my book and start from the cover side. Either way, it doesn't really matter, but there is a sewn signature, and that is how you sew a signature. Now for a stick bound book. These are great if you don't have a lot of things that you can fold in half 
to make signatures if you've got a random sized piece of paper or if you want a whole lot of pages in a book but don't want to sew them or staple them you can bind them with a stick so i'm going to use this pupusa box to make my covers and so i'll cut two covers and then we'll do the pages open my box up man glue on that one's tough and that one's torn a little bit that's okay i'm going to make my covers this big And now I have two covers and they're pretty much the same size. They're good to go. Now for the pages. The great thing about a stick bound book is that you don't have to have pages that you can fold over to make a signature. You just have to have individual pages that are as big as your covers. So this is old math homework. I am going to use the edge, line it up here, and then I'm just gonna cut a piece of paper that's as big as my cover. And so you can really kind of pick and choose how big your papers are going to be. And you can really utilize some unused space on junk paper. It doesn't have to be a certain size. So it's a little more labor intensive, but you can use up more stuff. So there's that page. And then here's some social studies homework that had some blank spots. So I can probably make, looks like one maybe two nope not quite but i could make one here and i bet i could fit one here pretty close okay so that's good i'll make two pages out of this junky homework which is good now i have i have three pages i'm gonna go cut some more I have all of my pages cut, front cover, and all sorts of random stuff. I decided I wanted all sorts of random kind of paper. I have, you know, have this crumpled up piece of paper that I think I may draw on, but I've got magazine pages, I've got some colored pages, this was an envelope, um, and this was the window of the envelope, that's a piece of art that I did, more random pages, and more envelope. So you really can put as many pages of any kind in these books which makes it really great um, they don't have to be anything specific you can even add more pages after the book is finished which is even better so now that I've got all my pages done I'm gonna put my covers on them and I'm gonna decide what side I want my book to open on which I decided I wanted to open like this so all you need right now is your front cover so put your other things aside and grab your front cover to make the binding for this book, you will need a stick or pencil, a marker, something to use, and uh, a rubber band, which we'll get to in a minute. You're going to mark your front cover, and this will be the tricky part. If you've got a ruler, that's great. Um, you want to make a line down your front cover that's the same distance all the way down. So find something kind of fat, kind of straight. It could be like my bone folder right here I'm gonna use, and we're gonna make a line. Good enough. What you're looking for, you're going to punch holes in here, and so you're looking for kind of a buffer zone for your holes. In fact, I think I like the width of my book better, so I'm gonna stand my book up at the edge of the cover and then draw a line straight down. I like that size better. You're going to score right here in a minute. We're not there yet. Um, but you're gonna to wanna to mark off the area about the width of your finger um, for you to use as your binding area. This step requires a hole punch or some other hole punching device. You could use a thumbtack get your hole started and then ream it out with a pencil. Maybe that's what I'll do on my second one. But if you have a hole punch, that makes this a whole lot easier. You're going to want to punch two holes, one on one side and one on the other. And I'm gonna use the end of my hole punch to line up against the line. There's no rhyme or reason to do this, but I'm gonna make one hole and then let's just see what happens when I do it the other way. I'm going to get my piece of cardboard that I was using earlier 
let's just see. And I want my other hole to be about right here. I'm going to kind of pick the middle. It looks about the same with this one. Get my hole started. And then perhaps ream it out with a pencil. Yeah, that's caveman style, but it works. So you're going to need to do that with all of your pages. If you have a hole punch, it makes it a lot easier because you can take each individual page, use the, or maybe even two, depends on how good your hole punch is. I think I can probably use two. So you'll get your pages, line them up, and then you will punch the hole again using your cover as a guide. So if you were doing this caveman style, uh, you would have to punch little holes and then use your pencil to ream out the hole. Either one would work. And you do that with all of your pages. Last but not least, you'll need to do your other cover. You do it in the same manner, line it up, use these holes, and you punch them. Then you start your book, put your pages back the way you want them, however that was. At this point, you could even change your pages But you stack them up so that all the holes are in the same spot, generally. And then we move on to the next step. Before we move on to binding our book, we're going to want to score our front cover. Do you remember that line that we drew? We're going to want to use that line to go ahead and fold our cover over. I'm going to lay something flat against this and kind of pick it up so that I start the fold. So you could have laid maybe a pencil there um, to start the fold, but I'm gonna go ahead and crease this. So I'm gonna fold it inside out. I'm using my bone folder, the side of the marker, the side of the pencil to go ahead and make a really nice crease right here. The way that these books are bound, you don't want the whole cover opening. You just want part of the cover opening like that. So we're gonna make a good crease right here. Then grab your pages and we're going to bind them. To bind them, you will need a stick of some sort. I'm using a pencil. Uh, you could use a stick from your yard, a marker, uh, just about anything you have, but it's got to be long enough to span the two holes. So my pencil could have been shorter. It could have been like this. Uh, if your book is bigger, you're gonna need something long to go across, but you will need that. And then something either stringy, stretchy, rubber bandy. I don't have any regular rubber bands. I just have a hair tie, but that will work. It has to be longer than your two holes plus some. Uh, rubber bands work the best for this, but you could also use a string tied in a loop. We'll go over some troubleshooting stuff in a minute. Um, but what you're gonna wanna do is from the back of the book, you're going to want to take one side of your rubber band and thread it through your holes. Then you put the front cover on very last. I hope you have a rubber band at home because that was a pain. All right, you're gonna stick your pencil or your stick through your rubber band so that when you pull this other side, it does not come out. And you're gonna repeat the same process with the other side. Hopefully it will go a little easier. Um, you should have a pretty good line of sight in your holes. And if you have a rubber band, it will probably just go straight through. My hair elastic is really thick, and so I'm having to do it page at a time, but we're gonna persevere, so here we go. Whew, done. That was a lot of work, but I did it. 
So you're going to just slip your paper through, pull the rubber band out the back, and there you have it, it's bound. Now, if you had a, obviously this is a little loose, but it's still gonna work. And now you have a book. The cool part about this book is that you can add and take out pages whenever you want. So if you were to make this into a sketchbook or an art book, you could put your art pieces that you've done in this book, just like I did, and you could make it as a sketchbook. You can also put all kinds of different papers, and if you wanted to put some painting paper in here, it could be a painting book. There's a lot of different possibilities with this type of book. Um, <laughs> I would caution you from you know, using a pencil here if you plan on using this as the pencil you draw with because as soon as you take the pencil out, your rubber band could fall out. So the stick right here, make it something that you're not gonna be using for a while. Pull it tight and then there is your stick bound book. You can also use a piece of string or fuzzy yarn and you can do that even if you do have a rubber band if you wanted to make it nice on the outside. Fold your string in half Stick the loop through the side that you don't want to tie. I think I'm going to tie mine on the top, so I'm gonna stick my loop through the bottom. Okay, so you've got your loop on this side, and then you're going to put your other two ends through the holes on this side. I'm using my pencil to make sure that the holes are lined up. both sides through and then you would take your stick wrapping your looped end around one and then tie the other I think this looks cool I think that it gives it really especially if it's a stick from out in your yard and now you can make it as tight as you want and the same rules apply if you want to add a page all you do is undo the ties and you could add a page to it. You can also make this book as big as you want. You could take, especially if you use a string, and if you've got a nice long stick, you could make it whole sheets of paper, or even half sheets of paper, or any size sheets of paper. This is a very flexible format. And so you could just do it like that. Well, I hope you learned something, and I hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Mrs. Bala's Messy Desk. I hope that you come and show me all your pictures and all the fun stuff that you've been doing this week in art. Um, we miss you guys, all of the art teachers out there. You guys don't even know. We live off of your creative energy. And so when we're separated from all of our little students, it makes it really hard. We love you and we miss you. Um, so send us pictures. Um, get in touch with your art teachers. They love you. They want to see the stuff that you've done. Show me on Facebook and Instagram, uh, post your social media, or if you're my kiddos, send me your stuff. I have to see it. I want to see it. Go make some art. Go have fun and make a book. Till next time, stay safe and we'll see you next week. Bye.